When I think about slow living, I think about savoring my favorite parts of life. As much as I love a full day with nothing on my schedule, I don't really enjoy it if I know there's a long list of things I need to get to. I enjoy the rhythm of one or two big task days in my week where we clean, meal prep, do lots of yard work, grocery shop, household tasks that just need to be done to keep our home peaceful. So that then the rest of the week, I can actually just enjoy a slower pace and not feel stressed by a long list of to-dos. Today's gonna be a little more casual. We're just gonna hang out together. I have a bunch of stuff that I need to get done. It's been a few days of really crazy weather here in Hawaii. Okay, crazy as in like it was really windy and really rainy. It wasn't that crazy, but we did have a big storm roll through and we were without power for 24 hours, which I know isn't that bad either. Our house is a mess. Our yard and garden are kind of a mess. Our fridge and pantry is a big mess. I need to clean that up. Um, and get that organized. The kids and I made some Christmas cookies and a few different DIY ornaments over the past few days. And so we need to get those strung and put on the tree. I just have some like day-to-day -day life stuff that I'm gonna get to that I need to get to as well. So, I don't know what you're up to. Maybe you're just chilling. Maybe you're gonna put me out in the background and get stuff done with me. Love that too. Either which way, thank you for joining me on this video. I do have a lot I need to get done though, so let's get to it. I need to fix up this plant. Maybe I'll propagate a few of my plants in this video. Ooh, that'd be fun. Okay, let's do that. All right, starting off my productive day with some houseplant TLC. This was long overdue, and first on my list was this pothos plant. It really is in need of a haircut. I needed to go and untangle all of its, what are you, arms, legs, it's losing some leaves. You can see all the little roots starting to grow. It's definitely time for a haircut. So I'm gonna show you how I propagate this plant to make it look full and fluffy like when you buy a pothos at the store compared to when you just cut and propagate it, stick it in a jar, and it's just not that cute in my opinion. So you start with a cutting off of your plant. It's gonna look a lot like this. And what you're looking for is little roots starting to grow little baby roots and you'll see them they're dark brown or black and they're growing one beneath each leaf so what you're going to do is cut right beneath each root baby and then create a beautiful bouquet of leaf trimmings and stick that in water to let those roots grow until you get a nice big full root ball and then stick that in a new pot to grow into a full fluffy pothos plant rather than just the one skinny leg. So I'm gonna trim this cutting and make a new pothos plant. that this plant was getting some fruit flies on top and I have found that ground cinnamon really helps. So then we moved on to some outdoor chores and I will take you along for a little bit of that.
After all the gardening was done, I tied up a few herbs to dry them out. This is usually the spot I do that at, right here in our entryway. And then I took the cilantro and started chopping it up to make some guacamole to go on top of our vegan carne asada fries. This is one of my favorite things to make when we just kind of have nothing in the fridge and a bunch of leftovers. So I, by the way, I will put all the recipes from this video down below and also the directions for any DIYs that I'm gonna include. I roasted up some potatoes and just combined all of our leftovers, salsa, beans, some cashew sour cream, and this lentil walnut carne asada meat that I make by chopping up walnuts and throwing them in with some sauteing red lentils and onion. I add all the traditional seasonings that you would put on like Mexican street tacos or carne asada. And I mean, it doesn't taste like carne asada, but it's a pretty good alternative that's whole food plant-based. So top that with the leftover beans and all of our guacamole, the cashew sour cream and some salsa. This was so good after a long day of work in the yard. Kyle just brought home stuff from Target. I need to super glue my nativity sheep leg down. We can make sourdough bread. We are ready. Look at my sourdough starter. It is definitely ready to bake my first loaf with. This is an example of something I do not keep in my house. I let Target keep it for me. I could have read some instructions for it. Number one, puncture the nozzle. Oh, do this to puncture the nozzle. Unscrew the cap counterclockwise. I don't know what clockwise or counterclockwise. Whoa, there it is. That's some good super glue right there. All right, now we wait. You should stand them up. Kyle also got to all the ornaments that we had just sitting in a box that were broken and fixed those. By the way, I moved our tree I don't know if anyone's gonna even notice, but I didn't want you to be confused. So I moved our tree and there's where it is now. I actually like it way better over there. And then I finished up all the orange slices that I had dried by just adding twine to them. By the way, we made some ornaments with cornstarch and flour and I will put the recipe for that down in the description box. It was really fun. And these were a little bit easier than the salt dough ornaments that I made a couple years ago. I think I preferred these because they stay pure white and they're a little thicker. They just turned out really good. So if you're looking for a ornament, DIY ornament to do with your kids, I recommend this one. So then we finally got Tennessee's Christmas ornament on the tree and wrapped a couple of gifts. And that was pretty much it for this day. The next morning was sourdough day. I've never made sourdough, but I recently finally got around to a sourdough starter and it's been doing really well. So Tennessee and I work together to, basically it's a 48 hour process is what I learned. All of this, by the way, coming from Farmhouse on Boone, her tutorials and everything walk you through the whole process. And both my loaves turned out amazing and I can't wait to show them to you. I also made a big batch of granola for the week and threw that in the oven while I was stretching and working my dough every 15 minutes for three hours. I know it sounds tedious, but it was actually really enjoyable. I don't know, I just love it. And then I got to cleaning out our fridge and freezer. This was something that really needed to get done and I had been putting it off.
just a little fridge and pantry tour because I'm so proud of my work here. <laughs> it looks so much better. I didn't even want to show you it before, but it looks so much better and it feels so good to kind of start Christmas week and just a new week in general with a clean fridge and freezer. I even organized the pantry. I made this little spot on our freezer um, door for all of our smoothie stuff, which I thought, I don't know, that just makes me really excited. I like having a little smoothie shelf, smoothie spot. And then I organized all of our bulk stuff from Costco. My granola's in there, look at it. All my dried orange slices. I made so many orange slices that I don't know what to do with them. I was gonna make it, maybe I'll make a garland. That would be cute. I've got some dried beans back in here that I didn't even know about. My flour and rice situation, a whole thing of pasta and potatoes. I actually learned this from my I actually learned this from my mom. There's always bread in the freezer. I don't know how, but it's like one little piece here, a weird loaf here, and then the end of this that's stale and it's getting freezer burn. So, I'm gonna make some croutons right now and they're gonna be amazing. I just preheated my oven to 400 and I'm just gonna cut them into cubes, season them with some herbs and olive oil and salt they're gonna be the best croutons in the history of ever. So we're really frozen. This might be enough for this sheet pan. Even these are good. Chop them up. Okay, little squares all on the sheet pan. I actually have fresh herbs that I need to use up. I typically do like an Italian spice mix, parsley, basil, maybe a little bit of garlic powder if you have some, and onion powder. I just don't have any, so I'm gonna do what I can with what I have. Saturday. It's really early. And I'm going to the farmer's market. You saw the inside of our fridge. I'm one of those people that can go on an empty fridge for a long time. I must just like be okay eating rice and beans. I don't know. But we need some fruit. People in Hawaii are serious about their farmer's market festivities. Um, if you don't get there by like Seven at the latest. All the good stuff. Oh, that's right. All the good stuff is gone. <laughs> I don't know about you, but like I'm one of those people that needs like recharge time with no input from other brains or like music or podcasts. Like I just need time for my brain to just process. So going for a drive, going for a walk, sometimes just taking like a long shower, take it all in. I feel like I did pretty well for being late. If anyone's waiting for my parking spot. So successful farmer's market trip. I got a rack of bananas, a bag of rambutans, some passion fruit, kabobe squash. Pretty soon you're gonna, I think you've already seen it in this vlog. I have like on each vine 20 squash growing. So I probably have 80 to 100 squash starting to grow in our garden. But I did get one for now because they're not ready yet. What else did I get? Oh, two coconuts. We usually get way more than that for milk, but 
since I was late, he only had like one good mature coconut left and you need the young one for the water and the mature one for the, you know, creamy meat. And so I only got two, but that's fine. That's like a luxury. It's not essential that we have fresh coconut milk, but it's so good when we do. I am now gonna listen to Daily Audio Bible my favorite podcast. We're at the end of the year right now. Basically, it's a podcast. It just looks like this. This is the best podcast. I've been listening to this for years. Every year it takes you, as long as you listen every day, through the entire Bible. So I'm going to listen to today's episode. I usually listen to them on one and a half speed. <laughs> Don't judge me. 